Hello everyone, we will continue the topic update function module and in the previous videos we understood the concept of update function module, we studied update debugging, now it's a turn to take a real project requirement itself and we will achieve that requirement using update function module. So what the requirement is, what customer is saying, customer want the total count of sales order, customer want the total count of sales order of a particular date. It means what customer is saying, whenever customer will go for a specific date, it will give the total count of sales order created on a particular date. Customer is saying, customer want a table. In that table, two columns will be there. What is the first column? First column will be date and another column will be count. Whenever customer will put that date, it will give the total count of sales order for that particular date. It means this requirement, just think, this requirement has total three steps. What is first step? First step, we will create a table. And table has how many columns? Two columns will be there. One will be date and another will be count. And what is the second step? Second step, we need to write the logic to insert the data, to update the data into this particular table. Where we will write the logic to update the data to this particular table? We will write the logic in update function module. And what will be the third step of the requirement? You created the table. You have written the logic to update the data into this particular table. That logic you have written in the update function module. What will be the third step? Whenever you will create a sales order, from which transaction code you are creating a sales order? VA01. So whenever you will create a sales order through VA01 transaction code, we will call this update function module. So in VA01 transaction code, we will call this update function module. So this particular requirement has three steps. Firstly, we will create a table. We will create a update function module. In that function module, we will write the logic to update this table. You have written the logic, you have created the table. But now you need to call this update function module. So in VA01 transaction code, we will call this update function module so that whenever we will create a sales order through VA01 transaction code, this update function module will execute in the update function module. You have the logic to update this particular table. So in this particular table, date and count will store. And whenever the topic will proceed, we will go for full explanation why, why we are not simply updating the table, why we are writing the logic in the update function module to update our own table that will automatically come when the topic will proceed. So we will start with our first part of the requirement. I will create a table and in that table, I will take two columns. What is first column? Date and another column will be count. So I will go to SC11 transaction code. I will go to SC11 transaction code and I will create my own table. Suppose name of that table is ZTORD. Okay, ORD count. I will go for create. 
I will simply give the short description. Sales order count table. Now I will go for delivery class. I will not take the delivery class C because we are not maintaining, we are not generating the table maintenance generator and maintain that data. No, the function module, we will write the logic. That logic will insert that data into this particular table, will update the data into this particular table. So I will not say take C. C means customizing. You are not maintaining that data into that table. So I will take A only master and transaction data. I will take display maintenance allowed. I will go for fees. Now you all know the first column in that table is MA and DT always, which is for the SAP client number. And the data element for the same is MA and DT. Now, what is the second column in that table? Date, date. You can simply go to SC11 transaction code. In VBAK table, we already have a column and data element for that date. So I will simply take that ER that created on. So I will use this date. Yes, date is compulsory a primary key. Yes. Because you want the count of sales order on a particular date. So what will be the primary key of the table? The primary key of the table is the date. Yes. How many sales order on a particular date is mean date is the primary key of the table. And what is the data element for the same? ER dat only. ER dat. Now I will come on to the count which will store the total number of sales order. Suppose name of the column is count. Suppose I will write count. Now, now here you can use existing data element also if you have, or you can create your own domain and data element. Suppose I will create my own domain and data element. So I will open another session. So I will create a domain first. Suppose I am saying Z count. I will create. Yes. I will give the short description count. Now data type. You all know sales order count. It means it is always number. We will store that 100 sales order, 200 sales order, 500 sales order. It means it is always, always a number. So what the data type? numeric. Suppose I will take the length as 10. I will simply activate this domain. I will save it as a local object. Now I will create a data element. Suppose name of the data element is ZDE count. I will go for create data element suppose count i will pass the domain which i created and i will give the field label suppose count here i will write sales order count now i will simply put into long and heading words I will activate this data element. You can use SAP predefined data element also if you find something is, yes, or you can create by your own. So I will simply pass this data element. Now count will not be the primary key of the table. The primary key of the table is date. Now I will go to technical settings. Yes, I will save. I will just go for local object. Now I will go for data class. I will choose a double B L zero. Now size category, I will take zero. Service. Now I will save. 
I will go to back button and I will activate this particular table. So first part of the requirement is red. I'm getting an error. I will check what the error is. Okay. Count is a reserved word. I have a perception that this error will come. So I'll just change. Because see, count is a SAP reserve keyword. So you cannot give the name count. Suppose I will give S count, sales order count. Now I'm activating the table. Done. So the first part of the requirement is done. We created a table which has two columns, date and the count. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we took a requirement that we will go for a table which will store the total count of sales order created on a particular date. See, you know sales order data is in VBAK and VBAP table. But yes, we do not have total count column there. Yes. So what customer is saying? Yes, whatever the sales orders are creating, those total count of sales order will store into a particular table. After that, customer can ask for report also based upon that particular table. That's a different thing itself. So based upon that, we understood that we have three parts of the requirement. Firstly, we need to create table, which has two column, date and the count. What is the second part of the requirement? We have to write the logic. And we will write the logic in update function module. As our topic is this only update function module. In that update function module, we will write the logic to update this particular table. It means we will put a date and count into this particular table. Now, what will be the third part of the requirement? You created the table. You created the function module in which the logic is written. But lastly, you need to call this update function module. So we will call this up update function module whenever we will create the sales order. Whenever we will create the sales order, we will call this update function module. In this update function module, the logic is written to update this particular table. So this table will get updated and slowly, slowly, because people will think why we are writing the logic in the update function module, we can write simple logic also. Anyways, whenever I will come on to a third part, all these questions will be answered automatically. And we finished with the first part of the requirement. We created the table. In the next video, we will create a update function module and we will write the logic to update the data into this particular table. So that's it in this video. Thank you.